Hey, 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 this is W5HRO. I wanted to give one final quick update because I, re I realized I didn't go into enough detail about what I did with the Zener diode in this thing. I want to explain something. This thing, uh, let me put this thing on plate voltage. This amplifier's power supply, now I don't know how accurate this meter is. I'm assuming it's somewhere close. You know, because what I'm seeing, it, see, I mean, what, what, the, the data sheets that I'm looking at pretty much tells me I think it is pretty darn close. I know the original, the first couple production runs of these things, they had a big problem. The meters were not accurate. And I think they finally fixed it in the end where they're darn close now. But uh, I'm getting uh, uh, 20, uh, 2,900 volts out of this thing. It's 2,900 volts idle. And when I transmit just at idle bias, at zero plate current, it drops down to 2775, plus or minus five volts or so, you know? About 2775. Now, when I go to uh, the plate current here, see that's 50 mil static bias. Zero plate current is what, is what it means. It means, you know, zero signal. I mean, I've, I'm just keying the mic. There's no power going to the amp. It's just idling at 50 mils. Each one of those ticks marks down there on the bottom is 25 mils. Before it was up there, uh, uh, a little, I think it was on the next tick mark or the one before it, it was at least 75 milliamps. I think it was around 75. And see, it's dropped the, put the zener in there, dropped it down to 50 milliamps. Now, let me explain something to you. If you look at the data sheet, now first of all, this is the RF parts data sheet for the tube. This is a 3-500 ZG, which means it's got a graphite anode. What this tube is, it's a Pinnell Laboratories 3-500 ZG that's been rebranded with RF parts name on it. It's the same freaking tube. And here's the data sheet for the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Pinnell Laboratories. It's the same tube. See, it's the same tube. They're just, they're coming from the same factory in China, and RF Parts is, has a deal with them, and they're just rebranding the parts, I mean the tubes with their name on them. Now, if you look at this, I, at idle bias, the thing, like I said, it runs about 2775 on the voltage, on the plate voltage. So that means if you look between 2500 and 3000 volts on this tube, this is, you know, cathode driven, this is for linear configuration, ground and grid. And see the threshold there? See what it does? Down low voltage is 65 milliamps. See, zero signal play current. That means the idle bias. 95, then it's up to 130. Then there's this threshold when you, as you increase the plate voltage, it starts going down again. So I'm actually a little past halfway on this, the way the tube's running. It's because if you take 3,000 plus 2,500, and then you divide that by two, that's 2750. And I'm getting about 20, 25 more volts out of it. So the idle bias is supposed to be somewhere right around probably, I'm guessing, 65, 70 milliamps, probably 75, which is what I was seeing on the meter before. So now that I've actually put that zener in there, that 7.5 volt zener, it's dropped it down to 50, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. But after I thought about it some more, it, I probably should have bumped it down to a 6.8 volt zener. Because what it is, I got that 7.5 volt zener off the AL80A manual out of the data sheet and the parts list. And uh, the AL80As, I think they're running the, at the full 3,000 volts. They're probably idling. I think the plate transformer is a little bit higher voltage. I'd have to go back and look. So the 7.5 volt zener on, on this amp should have been probably about a 6.8. And that would have brought the idle current just a little above, you know, a little, a little above 62. So it would have been somewhere right about there. So everything's jiving with what I'm seeing. But at the same time, having this thing only idling at 50 milliamps, it makes the it makes the amp more linear, and it's it runs cooler. So it's really it's really better on the amp to have it at 50 milliamps. I could have tweaked it and gone to a 6.8 volt zener, and that probably would have put it just about where the data sheet says. It's not that critical, because like I said, I'm going to, later this summer, I'm going to pull that supply filter board out of there and the, with the diodes and the, uh, the, the filter caps, and I'm going to bump those filter caps up 25 mics each. So that my, my idle bias is going to, I mean, my 
plate voltage at idle is going to come up just a little bit more. It'll probably come up about 25, maybe, you know, 50 more volts or so. So it's going to be just a little bit hotter. I'm guessing it's probably going to, because it's going to have a little bit more storage, a little bit more capacitor blade. And idle, I'm thinking at least 25 volts higher, maybe 50 volts higher. So that's going to compensate some too, you see. So I'm going to do that, then see what it does. And I might decide to put in a 6.8 volt zener then. But right now, this thing's running a lot cooler. It's probably better to leave it like this and just run the plate voltage up more, bumping up the caps just ever so slightly. I could put 200 mic caps in this, but I'm afraid what's going to happen is it's going to be above three, the bleed's going to be above 3,000 volts. And when I go to here, the meter's going to peg out all the way. And that's, that's a bad thing. So if I bump it up, just 25 mics each cap, take out the 125 mics, put 150s in their place, because they're in series, right? Anyway, there's, they're, the, the caps are in series. So that'll just bump it up just a little more. That'll probably put me closer to 3,000. So that'll be better anyway. And then see, it'll be closer to where it's supposed to be anyway. But see, even at 3,500 volts, the tubes, you know, the idle current's about uh, 53 milliamps, so I'm still below that. So, you know, I could bump the caps up. I could change that zener down to a 6.8. It's probably, you know, all it's going to do is make the amp run hotter if I do that. I should probably just leave the zener alone because it's, it's easier on the amp leaving it just a 50 mils idle because it is more linear when you do that. You'll get more overall peak power on the peaks, but a little less instantaneous in the middle, you know. You'll get that instantaneous peak power up a little higher, but then, you know, the overall average in the middle is going to be a little less having it only biased at idle in it, you know, at 50 milliamps like this. So it's not really that critical. But I, I may decide in the end to put a 6.8 volt zener in there instead, because that would probably, you know, set it right where the data sheet says it's supposed to be. So I just kind of wanted to cover that and explain why I did this and what it's doing. And everything's jiving between the data sheet and what I'm seeing and what I, what I had before, what the readings I had before and the readings I have now, it all makes sense. So that's all for now. I just kind of want to give that quick update. And like I said, later this summer, I'll do a uh, another video when I go to uh, redo that uh, filter, that supply filter board, because I'm going to change those high voltage diodes in there too. So that's all for now. This is W5HRO73s.